Approximately one year ago, I published my video regarding disgraced content creator Onision, a YouTuber who's had a large number of very heavy allegations levied against them over the past few years. However, in contrast to the many other creators at the time who were milking video after video after video about Onision, instilling false hope into the audience about the possibility of criminal charges, I took the firm stance that Onision would not be going to jail at all for any charge in relation to the allegations. This video was met with extreme backlash from the anti-Onision community, who called me ill-informed and stupid because the almighty Chris Hansen was handling the case. It was going to the FBI. The Pierce County Sheriff's Department was investigating and Onision would see justice very soon for his heinous crimes. But it turns out that after one year of intense investigation, after months of promises from Chris Hansen that something was about to happen, I was right all along. Okay, okay, I know you want to get straight to the interesting stuff, and that is coming, I promise. But before we get there, I need to give you a brief timeline of the events and controversies surrounding Onision. As some of you may know, Onision has had a long and tumultuous history online. In fact, he's pretty much been criticized for as long as he's been around. I can't express to you my emotion right now and my frustration towards this idiotic, pathetic, scumbag, douchebag known as Onision. However, around two years ago is where the conversation around Onision really started to shift. Where once people used to make videos calling out his terrible takes or just showcasing him being extremely weird, now some far more serious allegations started to surface to the mainstream. Allegations that he was a child groomer, an abuser, and a manipulator who exploited women for his own selfish desires. The anti-Onision movement became larger and larger as they all rallied against this one universally disliked figure. And the internet exploded. Unlike my previous videos on Onision, this is a very, very serious video. This video is serious in nature due to the fact that it covers a lot of serious topics, which is all documented and supported by evidence. I've debated this YouTuber over all of the allegations of predatory and inappropriate behavior with underage girls, for which there's probably like hundreds of accusations at this point. He has a repeated pattern of going after underage girls. One of his relationships, actually no, two of his past relationships landed him in a situation where he had to look up the state laws of where the girl lived so that he could know whether or not it was legal for him to have sex with them. There's a massive amount of concern uh, that Greg was okay with this and was talking to this 14-year-old girl encouraging a future relationship. It is, by definition, grooming. In the meantime, a former entertainment legend had just been exiled from his job in mainstream television. Chris Hansen. Once the pinnacle of morals and justice, was now caught up in numerous financial issues as well as a cheating scandal with his now ex-wife. TV really wanted nothing to do with him, so he had to figure things out on his own. And what better place than YouTube, the platform for you to broadcast yourself? And that's exactly what Chris did. Hey guys, Chris Hansen here with some exciting news about my new YouTube channel, Hansen vs. Predators. All my classic work, as well as some new investigations, coming very soon. Although Chris did have some success on his channel, nothing was quite at the level where it needed to be for him to fully take off. He did try and tackle some YouTube-related cases, such as Ice Poseidon and Only Use Me Blade, but he still very much seemed disconnected and separated from the YouTube community at large. That is, until Blair White introduced him to a certain greasy-haired, creepy, and universally hated creator that had allegations of child grooming and abuse against him. This was right up Hansen's alley. He had hit the jackpot, and he rode the wave perfectly. 
Hey everyone, Chris Hansen here on Have a Seat with Chris Hansen. We're going to continue this evening on our investigation of Onision, who's a YouTube streamer who's been accused of being a predator, a YouTube sensation named Onision, into the YouTube streamer Onision, under investigation for sexual impropriety, grooming young women who were viewers, followers. We've been investigating Onision. There have been allegations of grooming. We are intensifying our investigation into Onision. The allegations are honestly quite shocking. We continue our investigation into Onision, involving himself in inappropriate transmission of child porn, in essence. We are deep into the investigation of Onision. The Chris Hansen versus Onision story was truly one of the biggest events of the year, and Hansen going to Onision's house and knocking on his door drove people crazy. 911, what are you reporting? Hi, uh, there's a person who's been stalking me online and they just showed up to my house. Okay, and they're outside now? Yes, they're knocking on my door. Okay. They have a bunch of camera people, like they're YouTube stalkers. And the one that's knocking on your door, is he the main one that you said has been stalking you? Yes, he's a stalker. Oh. He's, he's yelling things at me through the door right now. Okay, and what do we know his name at all? It's Chris Hansen. It all seemed reminiscent of the old days of To Catch a Predator. Chris was back in the game, at least for now. But... Unfortunately, his feeling of invincibility would be short-lived. As time went on, people started to get restless. Things just didn't seem to be going anywhere, and people were thinking that Onision was going to get away. Because there were no developments, people started to forget and stopped caring about Onision, and Hansen's views started to tank as a result. It doesn't help that the police were also completely occupied with the COVID-19 pandemic response. If you remember, Washington state was completely overwhelmed during the beginning stages of the pandemic back in February and the months following. But it's now August of the following year, and still, to this day, nothing has happened. So what's going on? It seemed to me that either due to his own incompetence or due to people giving Chris inaccurate information, he thought there was a lot more solid evidence against Onision than what actually existed, which led to him implying and even downright saying that Onision would be going to prison for the things that he had done. I now know that the Pierce County Sheriff's Department is working through a very specific list of victims. The FBI, as we know, is involved in continuing to get to the bottom of the federal laws potentially broken in this case. Police investigations and FBI investigations now underway. And remember one other thing. A lot of people want to see justice in this case. The investigation come to an end. It took better than a decade to bring Weinstein and Epstein to justice. We will get justice here, and the victims will continue to be heard. In the meantime, I'll remind you of something I said a while back. I was a reporter before he was born. I'll be a reporter after he goes to prison. Hopefully, where he won't have a lot of access to making those videos on the internet. I have always stated that Onision is not a good person, and I'm not here to defend him under any circumstance. I have said as early as February last year that Onision skirts the legal line when it comes to the allegations that have been levied against him. Because what he's done may be disgusting, repulsive, and creepy, but it's just legal enough to where he'll probably get away with it. But all of this lacked one vital thing. Solid evidence. Like many creators, I like to wait for more information before I make sweeping statements, like that Onision will be going to prison. So I approached everything with heavy skepticism. I thought that the timeline here was very strange, and I felt that by now, there would at least have been some form of action brought against Onision if there was sufficient evidence of anything criminal. I had this gut feeling for months that nothing was really happening behind the scenes. But prominent people behind the anti-Onision movement assured me that Onision would see justice. It would just take time. To be honest, I didn't really believe them, and I told them that. However, at the end of it, we were all just playing the waiting game. But I wouldn't be waiting for long. If you know anything about the anti-Onision community, you would know that the most dedicated amongst their ranks like to get personally involved in the story. Instead of just sitting back and letting the professionals handle things, 
they decided to call 911 and the police non-emergency line, spamming them with calls about Onision. Communications, how may I help you? Hi, um, I wanted to request a welfare check. There's been accusations of grooming and pedophile behavior from this man, uh, but um, I have no idea if it's true or false. Hello, um, I'm trying to get a wellness check on Kai Jackson. I'm kind of like a fan, but I uh, noticed that like his husband is posting some really strange things on Twitter, so I'm a little concerned. He posts very controversial videos on YouTube, which are, you know, we're used to that. That's his normal content. However, lately, they look like he's losing his mind. So there's a famous YouTuber that lives in Gig Harbor. I'm, I don't live there. Um, but he's, like, being investigated and stuff like that. And he posted um, a meltdown video, like, a day ago of him just, like, really freaking out and, like, acting really creepy. And I, like, I can't stop thinking about it. It's, it's terrifying me. And I know um, sometime recently the, the police were called because he, he called uh, saying... That Chris Hansen, the Tracker Predator guy, was stalking him and had showed up at his house and all that shenanigans. As a result of numerous calls and CPS referrals, the Pierce County Sheriff's Department created a report to categorize everything in one place. In July of 2020, I was provided with this report that came all the way back from October of 2019, and it finally gave some answers to the questions that I had been asking for months. This report is to document numerous CPS referrals related to the same allegations addressed in this and previous reports related to possible sexual grooming by James Jackson toward minor children in his care. Each of the intakes address allegations that Jackson had previously had a female juvenile named Sarah who lived with him and his wife at the address in Gig Harbor. The referrals claim Jackson shared nude photographs and otherwise groomed Sarah to participate in sexual activities with him and his wife while Sarah was under the age of 18. According to the referrals, Sarah had since moved out of the residence. There is no information on Sarah in any of the referrals, and I could not find any reports which listed Jackson as a suspect in any crime involving Sarah. Jackson is a YouTube entertainer with several channels under his username of Onision. According to the referrals, there are videos circulating online in which Sarah makes claims against Jackson, and others where Jackson allegedly admits to those claims. I viewed numerous related YouTube videos and did not locate anything that would amount to any criminal activity as described. It appeared there was at least one video by another YouTube entertainer which urged the audience to report the same allegations to authorities, most likely explaining the recent influx of CPS referrals and non-emergency police calls. I contacted a CPS investigator who advised she had also viewed numerous videos and concurred with my assessment of the content. It should be noted that deputies have contacted Jackson at his residence on at least two prior occasions during the past year related to similar allegations, and no evidence of any criminal activity could be found. This case status is being changed to inactive, no investigation necessary. There is nothing further at this time. Yes, the anti-Onision community harassed the police so much with non-emergency calls and CPS reports that they created a report saying all of it was completely unfounded. But we have to keep in mind that this report was from before Chris Hansen got involved. Surely some collaboration with the most prominent predator catcher in the world would yield some results. Well, for a long time, it looked like that was indeed going to be the case. For many months after Hansen began his reporting into Onision, he updated the audience near the end of every show regarding investigations by official government bodies that were underway. On the 21st of November, Hansen said on his show with Billy that he had contacted the FBI and conversed with them regarding the allegations. I should let you and our audience know that I did have a conversation with the FBI yesterday. Obviously, there was evidence that some of the young women have that uh, could very well be of interest to investigators. And contact is being made um, within the uh, Bureau between the different field offices involved here across the country, including Washington State. But again, a reminder that even though Greg, Jackson, Onision apparently were very careful about ages 
issues in terms of having young women visits, relations and everything else. What many people in these cases aren't aware of is that the transmission of simply explicit pictures of people younger than 18 is a federal crime. So there is a very good chance that there's going to be a criminal investigation here and we will keep everybody posted. This was great news for the Antionision community. And for weeks afterwards, he continued the updates, saying the FBI was looking into things. We have, uh, again, been in contact with the FBI, and I will have answers for you next week when I see you on Wednesday. I also hope to have an update from the FBI by then. The FBI has taken a look at this, as I've mentioned before. I know people uh, are clamoring on YouTube and social media about wanting action taken. I've been down this road with many federal and local investigative agencies over 38 years of doing this, and it takes time. They have to read the files. They have to go over the cases. They have to review evidence. They have to interview victims. That all is going to take place, but it's going to take time. And there's a lot of evidence out there. There is every bit of a possibility for a prosecution there. So we're going to stay on top of that. And I um, do have some updated information from the FBI. It turns out that the the Bureau had Onision on its radar for some time. And the fact that we have brought these victims forward has only given it more urgency in terms of an investigation. And I will have a lot more information that I'm able to to talk about next week and the the week after when it comes to that. And then on the 19th of December 2019, on his show with Lane, Chris Hansen dropped a bombshell that shook the community to its core. I have uh, some further information from the FBI. The investigation continues. I know for a fact tonight, and I can tell you this, that the FBI will be examining potential evidence involving enticement, grooming, and the transmission of child pornography. And uh, it's a full-fledged investigation. So we'll keep you in the loop on that. The internet exploded once again with revived energy. Now, instead of speculation, the anti-Onision community finally had some solid hope that Onision would see justice for the terrible things that he had done. Things were going strong for Chris in the Onision investigation, and his channel only grew more and more rapidly. In the following month, Chris Hansen would interview the Pierce County Sheriff's Department's public information officer, Ed Troyer, who spoke about the investigative process without revealing any information about the ongoing investigation. He did, however, say one thing that really stood out to me. This is something that's continually ongoing, and a lot of the people that are involved in this are from out of state, so it's a little bit tricky. And also, you know, it involves the internet, and it involves a um, slippery slope where we're having a hard time finding people that are actual victims. A lot of the reports that we have come from third parties who maybe recognize their kids that are involved in some of this activity, or people that are just seeing it on his YouTube channel. So what we need to do is try and determine actually victim and get them down and get them interviewed, find out what is actually going on. Despite Ed Troyer stating that it was proving very difficult to find actual victims in this case, Chris must have been pretty confident that things were going to move forward since he kept on updating the audience on the status of the investigation for months at the end of every show. You can guarantee that we will continue these two investigations into Onision, the YouTube psycho brat from Washington State and Davi Vanity. Much more to come. A lot of work on the part of law enforcement, but it's happening. There was a lot of talk today and yesterday about the YouTube psycho brand in Washington. That investigation is far from over. We're staying on top of the Onision investigation. A lot of these things take time, and I know people want a revelation every week, especially when it comes to Onision. As you all know, this has been a place where we also investigate Onision, and it is very much moving forward. So we are expecting to see some results in the very near future. Before we wrap up, I want to let you know that we've been doing a little bit of reporting on the Onision James Greg Jackson YouTube psycho brat from Washington State story. We will, as I said, continue this investigation and our investigation into Greg James Jackson Onision. We'll continue with our Onision investigation and as I mentioned, Davi Vanity and many more in the works. But people kept waiting for months and months and months. And it still seemed like absolutely nothing was happening. Although Chris asked people to stay patient, We all know that the attention span of people online is rather short, and honestly, he had already drawn things out for much longer than people could handle. So the community started to move on and focused on other topics, namely to Chris Hansen himself. But that's a whole other story. You can watch my other Chris Hansen videos on this channel 
for more information. And now we fast forward to the 4th of January 2021, when the Discovery series Onision in Real Life was released. This disastrous documentary was a complete botch of the Onision story and was clouded in its own controversy, namely using the stories of victims without their permission. But we're actually not going to talk about that today. There's a bunch of other videos by other creators, some still upcoming, about how terrible this documentary truly is. We're actually going to jump forward to episode 3, with the familiar face of Pierce County Sheriff's Department, Ed Troyer, makes an appearance. I guess he was finally able to take some time out of his busy schedule catching newspaper delivery men to feature on the documentary. This segment is particularly important because Troyer is actually here to represent the police, and he speaks about the criminal investigation, although he doesn't really say too much. I could say in the years of doing this job, this is one of the more complex, complicated cases with the most moving parts that we've ever seen. When we look at this kind of new frontier of internet victimization, when you're going across the world with the internet and social media, there are no timelines because it may be three in the morning here, but three in the afternoon somewhere else. So it's a 24 seven ordeal. We have state, local, county, federal, people that are experts that are creating task force to combat this. And the prosecutor will be the one that decides whether or not charges are filed, what type of charges, if any charges are filed at all, that will be the prosecutor's decision. It's all pretty open-ended, but that's to be expected. He's just protecting the integrity of the investigation. And honestly, that's kind of where things ended. It's been over half a year since the documentary's release and no legal action has been brought against Onision. Literally the only thing that has happened is that Onision has been demonetized from YouTube, which honestly we all saw coming and it's long overdue. But other than that, that's it. I guess there's no real resolution here at all. Hold on, hold on. You didn't think I'd just leave you hanging there, did you? Of course there's more. Throughout the investigation of Onision, some members of the anti-Onision community have been filing copious amounts of public records requests and listing those records publicly for everyone else to see. Pretty much every police report and call we have regarding Onision and Kai have been archived and filed in this neat little spreadsheet created by Good Citizen Records. But on July the 22nd of this year, a new report was listed. In fact, it was a report from over a year ago, the 23rd of June 2020 to be exact. This report is rather significant because it contains the final conclusion of the Pierce County Sheriff's Department regarding the allegations made by Sarah, who had arguably the most significant evidence. Let's hear what the police had to say. In September 2019, the Pierce County Sheriff's Department received information regarding possible sexual exploitation crimes occurring at a residence in Gig Harbor. At the time of the initial complaints, there was very little information about the alleged crimes and no first-hand reports from any alleged victim. The complaint centered around a YouTube content creator named James Jackson, who was also known by his YouTube username, Onision. The original allegations were documented and cleared with no evidence of any criminal activity. Following the documentation under the previous case number, the Pierce County Sheriff's Department received over 40 additional emails regarding the same or similar allegations from third-party reporters who'd heard about the allegations through social media accounts. In addition, numerous other social media content creators developed channels and content directly related to the allegations in an attempt to conduct their own, quote, online investigations as to what might have occurred. Following PIO Troyer's interview with Hansen, I learned the FBI had also received numerous emails regarding the same allegations from third parties. I contacted FBI Special Agent Mendoza by telephone after learning she was assigned the case for further investigation. SA Mendoza confirmed the FBI had received a large number of tips, similar to what PCSD had received, but had not been able to establish that a crime had occurred. SA Mendoza told me the FBI had spoken with Sarah, but had not been able to establish a sex crime had occurred based on that interview. SA Mendoza told me Sarah had reported that nude and or explicit photographs had been sent between Sarah and Jackson while Sarah was still a minor child. S.A. Mendoza said a computer belonging to Sarah had been turned over to the FBI for examination for any evidence to support Sarah's claim, and then a decision would be made on how the FBI would proceed. 
The officer goes on to say that he contacted Hansen for the list of alleged victims so that he could get in touch with them for interviews to determine the existence and extent of any criminal activity that occurred in PCSD jurisdiction. He was given the list of seven victims, Regina, Lane, Billy, Haley, Ayala, Shiloh, and Sarah. The officer contacted each of them by telephone and left voicemails saying that they should call him back if they wished to file a police report. They were all given over a month to make contact with the officer, but the only person who responded to the officer's request was Sarah, who, as I've said previously, had the most significant and compelling case. But even then, the conclusion made by the police was a far cry from the promises that Hansen had been instilling for months. I spoke with Sarah by telephone regarding this investigation. I asked Sarah if she'd ever been an unwilling participant in any type of sexual activity with Kai or Jackson. Sarah told me she, quote, never told them no, and admitted she was not sure she was a victim of any crime. She confirmed she'd given her laptop to investigators and was aware it was in the FBI's possession for examination to determine if any of the images exchanged between her and Kai had violated law. I advised Sarah that I would follow up with S.A. Mendoza, but that based on the information she'd provided, I did not believe believe a crime had taken place in PCSD jurisdiction. On 06 I spoke with S.A. Mendoza by telephone to follow up on their investigation. S.A. Mendoza told me the examination had not yet been completed and advised she had no other information on any crimes that occurred in PCSD jurisdiction. She told me she would notify me if the examination provided any details about criminal activity that needed further investigation. As of 06 I have not heard back from any of the other women who were alleged victims of Jack all of the women had been in contact with Chris Hansen at some point to do a media interview and have had an opportunity to file a police report if warranted. Sarah was a willing participant in sexual activity after the age of consent, in fact after turning 18 years old, and was not under the legal care or custody of Jackson or Kai. Based on the information gathered during my investigation, I have not been able to establish that a crime occurred. This report is for informational purposes due to the high volume of third-party and social media interest. This is certainly a pretty disappointing result, especially considering Hansen's continual insistence that Onision going to prison was pretty much a guarantee. I was a reporter before he was born. I'll be a reporter after he goes to prison. Hopefully where he won't have a lot of access to making those videos on the internet. But all of this is even more scathing when you consider the timeline here. This police report was finalised and released on the 23rd of June 2020. As Hansen was a central figure in the investigation, constantly speaking to the police and FBI as said by himself and in this very report, there would have been no way for him to miss this new development. It would have been literally impossible for him not to know that the police believed that no crime had been committed. And yet, in show after show after show, Hansen continued to say that the police investigation was still ongoing, and even worse, that the audience should question the motives of the quote-unquote drama channels, such as myself, who were criticising Hansen and doubting the validity of the investigation. Back to Onision for a minute, and there's been some drama talk around YouTube and on social media that there is no investigation into Onision. Any Anybody who suggests to you anywhere that there is not and has not been an investigation both by the Sheriff's Department and the FBI, uh, anybody who suggests otherwise is just wrong. And you have to really question their motives. Drama. Clicks. Clout. I should also add that our other investigation, Onision, is heating up a little bit. And I anticipate that within the next week, we'll have some developments. And there's been a lot of chatter about the investigation and the status of the investigation. And I can assure you tonight that it is continuing to we'll talk about that more in the, in the weeks to come. Our investigations into Onision continue. We anticipate some developments in the next week or two. Exposure will continue for Onision. He does it to himself in some ways, and the investigation will continue as well. As I mentioned, I've been in contact with the uh, Pierce County people as well as uh, folks at the FBI, and it's moving along, and we'll have more specific information in the, uh, in the days to come. I promise you that. I think it's pretty clear that Hansen's YouTube stint was nothing more than another stepping stone back into mainstream television. Chris doesn't care about victims. 
he doesn't care about Onision, and he doesn't care about justice. If he really cared about the investigation, he would have been upfront with people and wouldn't withhold information from his audience. Instead, Hansen doubled down again and again and again, insisting for months that he had talked to the police and the things were moving. But now that we can look back a year later, when we have all of this information, we can see that he wasn't just being deceptive, but intentionally manipulative for months on end. Chris Hansen is desperate and will do anything if he thinks it will make him money. He got into the Onision story for that very reason and it worked. He raked in millions and millions of views and thousands and thousands of dollars of AdSense and donations as a result of his Onision content. But the investigation that was supposed to bring justice to Onision was a complete and utter failure. And make no mistake, the reason we all thought there was going to be criminal charges in the first place was because of Chris's false promises that he kept up for months and months, continuing even when the police themselves said there was no evidence of any criminal activity. That's why I even decided to cover this story in the first place. It has been clear to me for over a year that Hansen was not to be trusted, and as long as he keeps getting himself into trouble, I expect that I will continue to cover him. I truly want nothing more than for him to change for the better. However, I have seen no evidence that he is willing to do that. But at the end of the day, I guess we'll just have to wait and see. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.